Today I have the pleasure, all the way from Australia, we have Nick Erner from Alkane Resources. How are you today, Nick? G'day, Tracy. I'm great. Really enjoying being here, thanks. So, what's happening with rare earths in the market right now? Well, it's a really, really interesting time for the market. If you go out there and listen to people, they'll say, we know that outside of Linus, which supplies about 20-25% of the world's battery material, China has a lock on this stuff. And people are saying, OK, well, I'm being forced to do manufacturing in China through material supply. That's a problem for me. But then we see no action and commitment. And so what you have is the rise of a producer, Linus, and then a whole series of other projects, including ourselves as one of the most advanced projects that can produce rare earth, waiting for end users to say, right, I'm going to act now to secure my supply chain. So it's quite a dynamic time, and particularly, as you can imagine, with the Trump administration and who's doing what in trade tariffs, people are really watching closely, waiting for a signal that things are starting to break. And for those of you out there that, that look at issues like sustainability and geopolitical factors, yeah. this is the kind of company to be watching. So can you give us kind of an overview on what's happening right now with the Dubbo project? The Dubbo project? Well, our project is amongst, if not the most advanced non-developed project in the world. So we have an active gold business, but here we have a project that's state and federal approved, mining leases granted. We own all the farmland underneath, 3,400 hectares of farm. We actually run an agribusiness on top of it. Um, mines approved. So we could start developing today. Engineering done with Hatch, several revisions. You know, so we understand it's through to 30% engineering. This project could, with financing, be executed right now. And so we are in a constant and continued push on marketing, looking for off-takes, co-investors, etc. And that is a continual tension as people look for value versus trying to predict the future. So yeah, for us, we have a ready to execute project and we're really, really pushing to get a critical step taken. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's my understanding that outside of China, when you get this financing in place, yeah. you will be one of the largest producers of these rare earths outside of China, is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Because at the moment outside of China, of any substantial nature, we have simply Linus Corp digging up from the Mount World, shipping to Malaysia. That's it. They are the sole, uh, the sole supplier outside of China. Almost two thirds of their product goes into Japan, the rest goes into China. So yeah, that's correct, we would be. And we're very hot for niobium as well, which you also have. We do, we do. This, this project, like a lot of polymetallic projects, ours in particular has rare earth, rare earth elements, zirconium, niobium, and hafnium. So about 20% odd of our revenue would come from niobium. At that site, we're fully engineered to make ferro-niobium product that we could ship into the US you know, Asian or European marketplace. We have a business partner in Tribarca already lined up for that. Uh, they're an established ferrovanadium producer, plus a whole range of other stuff in Austria, in Europe. So yeah, absolutely, niobium is a part of what we would do. All right, so we have the rare earths. Yep. We've just discussed the niobium, yep. which of course is a critical material. Let's go back to sustainability. And yep. you have zirconium. Can you comment on that? Yeah, we do have zirconium. You know, and that's actually even a bit bigger than rare earths in potential revenue. Zirconium, industrial mineral, uh, nuclear fuel rods, uh, ceramic tiles, false teeth, very broadly used, a lot of catalysts, industrial catalysts. What we're seeing there is a lot of crunch coming on, the chemical conversion within China due to air, water and soil pollution within China. And so that market is shifting really quite rapidly for an industrial mineral. So people are watching very, very closely. What on earth is China going to do with it? Because some things, not ourselves, some have radionuclide side streams that need to be dealt with within China, and that's causing a lot of tension in it. So yeah, quite a dynamic market for an industrial mineral zirconium. So really, if you think about it, we've got rare earths on the move under tension, zirconium under a lot of environmental pressure within China, ferro ferroniobium, which of course we know is on the critical minerals list. We are a basket of critical minerals waiting in this, waiting in this project. So a lot of interest waiting for actual commitment out of people to deal with their supply chain issues. And of course you have the backbone with the production and revenue that you have coming in from your gold project. Yeah, that's correct, that's correct. So we're, we're definitely a sustainable business. So what that means for investors is 
we have very little need to go to the marketplace to raise capital and therefore continue to dilute just to hold a position. That's not us. Well, I have to get you to add something on the hafnium. You guys got me so excited about what hafnium, yeah. the future of hafnium. Yeah. You actually spray hafnium on glass that can absorb heat. Is this correct? All sorts of all sorts of things. If people out there, because you know we're talking to people on the internet, just go and Google hafnium advanced applications. They'll find computer chips, uh, you know, absorption of solar on windows, a whole a massive range of things, but quite a low tonnage, right? So quite a low tonnage. Very, very interesting element. I think one of the really interesting things here is hafnium, the main use outside of um, an alloy for turbines and high speed turbines and stuff, is actually the control rods of nuclear reactors. And here we are in PDAC, I just looked at a booth for Canada saying small modular reactors, why aren't we doing this in remote communities in Canada? They all need hafnium control rods, right? So it is a very, very interesting element, and yeah, we're, we, we would be the only producer of it outside of the nuclear industry in the world if we came online. So, yeah, very interesting. Well, you're doing a wonderful job with educating the overall audience, global audience, on these topics. Your website is fantastic. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. It's great.